So I want to give an example of using strong induction, not the strongest type of strong induction, but a, a, a pretty good example that has to do with the Fibonacci sequence. And as uh, I like to do, I'm going to emphasize to start with the informal inductive reasoning part of it, of trying to discover some pattern, and then we'll see how the strong induction principle can be used to carefully prove that. So the Fibonacci sequence, I won't, I'm assuming you have a little familiarity with that. You start out with one, and then one, and then the um, oops, the next term, each time you want the next term, the m plus first term, I'm going to use m here because it's I'm going to use an n for something else later, um, is the next term is the current term plus the previous term. And it's that look back by two units that's going to involve strong induction. So one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, and 5 plus 8 is 13, etc. It can be really convenient to start the sequence with 0, uh, with f sub 0, as with a lot of sequences like powers and things like that, and factorials, it makes sense to define it for 0. And it fits the pattern if you define f sub 0 equals 0. So we may need that. Um, and if it's a pattern, because then 0 plus 1 equals 1. So 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, etc. is makes perfect sense. Okay, so what I want to experiment with, and this is a good one, a good video to pause um, occasionally to experiment yourself, is what happens when I go two places ahead? Is there a systematic pattern when I go two places ahead um, and more, and three places ahead or four places ahead or five places ahead? And there's a beautiful result that comes out of that that um, does sort of double Fibonacci in a way. So let's look at uh, if I'm at a particular location M in the sequence and then I jump two places ahead. Well, this rule, just applied with m plus 1 instead of m, tells me that fm plus 2 is just fm plus 1 plus fm. If that's the next, this is the current and that's the previous. But I want to get it in terms of f sub m and f sub m minus 1. So I want to see it in terms of these guys. So I'm thinking that the knowledge I have is like the 2 and the 3 here. And I want to predict not what the next one is, but what this guy is. What is this in terms of these two numbers? OK. Well. I'm just going to use Fibonacci again. Fm plus 1 is Fm plus Fm minus 1, and then plus the Fm that was already there. So I get 2 Fm plus, and I'm going to put in explicitly 1 times Fm minus 1. Okay. Yeah, so what? It's not, not earth-shattering at this point. Okay. Let me see if I can fit this in here. Now let, let's look at F sub m plus 3. Okay, so that's F sub m plus 2 plus f sub m plus 1. Oh, hey, OK. I've got exactly that information already on the board. That's 2 f sub m's plus 1 f sub m. That's a 3 f sub m. And then a 1 f sub m minus 1 plus a 1 f sub m. That's 2 f sub m minus 1. OK. So far, mildly interesting. We're getting coefficients of 1, 2, 3, yeah. Big deal, OK? This is a good place to stop and see if you can figure out the pattern. The next one, mm, let's see, I don't think I need to mention this specifically, is f sub m plus 4. OK, by definition, again, a good place to pause. Work it out yourself. f sub m plus 3 plus f sub m plus 2. Oh, hey, I have both of those right here. That's going to be 3 plus 2 is 5 f sub m plus 2 plus 1 is 3, f sub m minus 1. And do we see a pattern yet? Hmm. So what we're building is a bunch of rules that say, if I'm starting and at some location in the Fibonacci sequence, and I go a certain number of places ahead, then it's always going to be expressible in terms of the current 2 that I'm looking at, the f sub m and f sub m minus 1, with some coefficients. And what do those coefficients start looking like? 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 5. Hmm, that's very interesting. So, looks like they're the Fibonacci numbers. And let's see why that would be true. This one is a good example. Where did this come from? Uh, the Fm plus 3 said look back just one thing to the, the previous version of the formula. And the Fm plus 2 said look back two places to the not just previous, but the previous to that, the, um, the second to last version of the formula. And so I'm getting 2 plus 3 is 5, 1 plus 2 is 3. That's exactly the Fibonacci pattern, just in those two slots. And one of them is one ahead of the other. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do one more. Uh, oh, let's just look at 
a, a numerical example. Let's say m is equal to 3, okay, and then m minus 1 is equal to one, uh, is equal to 2. So I'm looking at these two, and then just jumping four places ahead, the 13 should be 5 times 2 plus 3 times 1. Yeah, it totally is. Okay, so just in case you're wondering if this is really making any sense or if you want to be more concrete, you can just plug in some numbers. Okay, so what about f sub, five, f sub m plus 5? Let me squeeze it in up here. f sub m plus 5 is, of course, f sub m plus 4 plus f sub m plus 3. And once again, I've got... Um, the f sub m plus 4 written out in the way I want, plus the m plus f of m plus 3 written out in the way I want, and so that's going to be 8, and not just an accidental 8, a 5 plus 3. It's not just happened to be the Fibonacci, it's Fibonacci for the same reason. And then a 3 plus 2 is 5 times f sub m minus 1. Okay, so now this is a great example of um, looking at special cases, seeing a pattern, getting a sense that the pattern is not accidental, that you can explain the pattern at least vaguely. Then we can try to make the pattern precise, and then we can prove it using mathematical induction. Um, so the claim is that, now, now let me just write this out. The, the whole claim is that these are particular Fibonacci numbers, but let's say what they are. That 8 is f sub 6, and that 5 is f sub 5. Um, yeah, times f sub m minus 1. Okay, so this 5 gave rise to a 6 and a 5. Okay, so it looks like we have the pattern. f start at m and go n places further, and here's where n is going to come in, is, it looks like it's f sub, uh, that looking looks like an n plus 1, the Fibonacci number corresponding to n plus 1 times fm plus f sub n alone times f sub m minus 1. Okay, and so this it can look kind of funky, but, uh, and it's actually very symmetrical in m and n, but I've sort of focused on, here's the information we had. We were at this stage of Fibonacci where I was paying attention to f sub m and f sub n minus 1, and then n is the number of stages I skip ahead, and these are the coefficients that tell me how that skip can be predicted in terms of just where I am right now. So that's like the current data. That's the skip. And then these guys are the magic coefficients that tell me how to skip ahead using only my current data. And voila, they're also Fibonacci numbers. Okay. This rule has a lot of beautiful things happening with it, um, including relationships to like trig and like the sum formula for sine and cosine, which I did some videos about a while ago. Um, but that's kind of, I think, the most basic way to discover that there might be such a rule. Okay, so that's what we want to show. Okay, and we want to show that for all positive integers m and n. And in the next video, we'll see how um, how we can do that using a little bit of strong induction to really carefully prove that.